So every day my pre-stream patter will get worse, which is the definition of getting worse and worse. Hello and welcome to the stream. Today's pre-stream chatter was so bad I don't even want to talk about it. Um, so let's see what we're going to be doing today. Um, now last time we uh, somewhat tediously created TPC files for Jupiter, um, meaning we created files that give Jupiter's radius, Jupiter's moon's radius, cis rather, in a format that, uh, that um, Spice could understand them. Uh, we're going to try to create, let's see if we can find that here. Um, oh dear. Hang on one second here. I think I might have screwed something up. There we go. Um, okay. All right. Something's wrong. Help me. Hit me. Hit me. Okay. Um, well, there it is. Okay. End panic. Um, and I guess we did this in a separate directory. Oh, maybe we didn't. Okay, um, so basically what we did here is, if I can actually ever bring it up, is we defined the radii field, the radiuses field, uh, for all of Jupiter's moons that didn't already have it, uh, because, um, because, um, or I shouldn't, because they weren't in the PCK file. And one of the things we need to do here is very important, of course, is uh, complain to NASA. Always. Always a big step here is, you know, um, assigning blame, number one step, fixing things, number two step, complain to somebody about it, number three step. There's always someone you can complain to. Um, so we will be doing that, although it's not really a complaint, it's more of an observation in this case. Uh, so we did that all the way for Jupiter, and I hope I did it correctly. Um, it was somewhat tedious because we, and this, we'll mention this too, um, to NASA too, that because they have different names for things, um, among other problems, they have different names for Jupiter's moons uh, in the uh, the DE431 file and in the the file that tells us about Jupiter's moons. So hopefully today we'll be able to do this for Saturn, and it'll go a lot better. Uh, but I doubt it. I doubt it'll go better, but we'll probably end up doing it. Um, okay, so now let's see if we can find the Saturn version. Um, and actually, I think I've got a local copy of this, so it's not a huge deal. Okay, and what I did previously, um, oh cool, so this actually has some nice triple radius information, uh, meaning it, it's, um, it shows this is a triaxial ellipsoid, uh, which is how NASA models most things, but if all the radii are the same, this tilde is not very helpful, but if all the radii are the same, uh, then it's a sphere, obviously, and, and that's how NASA just puts one number here. Um, okay, and these satellites won't be too newly discovered to show up even in DE-431. In fact, if DE-431 is fairly old, so I, I doubt they'll show up there. Okay, so what I did last time um, didn't work great, but I basically did a cut and paste of this page, removed everything but the, um, the name of the satellite and the radius, uh, and then try to do a join uh, to the file that we got from um, um, from comment minus r of DE431. Uh, so that was pretty stupid of me, but I, it, I think we'll try it again, because, you know, that's just how I am. All right, so we're going to go ahead and go here into NAFE ID work, which I think is where I... Oh, okay, cool. Um... We're going to go even a little bit deeper here and, and just say, make a subdirectory called Saturn. Uh, now, the, the way we get all of our information here is um, there's a function called comment, which I won't be able to find today. Mm. Okay. Is it com something else? There's a way to read comments from, um, you know what, you might actually have to be in it. So the Saturn kernels are, these are the, um, these are the files that will contain data about Saturn satellites. Um, there's a lot of them, as you can see, I think, because at one point I wanted to go as maximal as possible, um, all of these will be included here, and it does look like sat, sat, sat. If you look at the, all of them are here, but that's because I, I pretty much put everything in here. 
So the way to look at these is to say comment. Yep, 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 yep. Uh, I think there's something wrong here because the, the comment command is is available. Um, I've used it before, and you're basically just going to read the comments. By the way, this isn't a big big trick or anything. If you do a less on the file, the very first part of it, uh, well, the first part of it's some headers, but this part here that we're looking at now, these are the comments. Uh, but C-O-M-M-T or whatever the, uh, the, the binary is that reads the comments, puts them into a slightly nicer format. It does not a, um, a huge, um, a huge, let's see, come on. Okay, so that's the file. Why isn't it Okay, so why isn't it showing up here? Uh, again, I'm not going to spend too much time down this rabbit hole. In fact, I'm going to stop spending any time down this rabbit hole because this looks really nasty. Um, the only thing I wonder about is if home user bin, because I could have sworn it works from other places. Yeah, so why does it work from here? Oh, I know why. Because I never update the uh, the paths here, so now we should just have it. There we are. Okay, so what we're going to do is for the satellite, the Saturn files, Saturn satellite, both begin with SAT. Very different. Saturn a planet, satellites the thing that orbit uh, Saturn, Saturn satellites. Uh, okay, so what we're going to do basically is um, this. So this gives us the, um, kind of wish I'd pipe that to less. Uh, let's see. So this basically tells us, uh, oh, this gives us literally the parameters for one satellite, a Gigeo 653. Um, and this is, we use this to tie, um, to tie this number, the NAFE ID, to the radius. It is Pomodoro time, first time I'm skipping it. Um, okay. That was not very exciting. Um, let's look at Saturn 368. Okay, so this one has a few more in here. And the, the general idea is here, we can use these NAFE IDs and the hello, 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 hello. Oh, I'm sorry. Hang on, thank you. Stand by. Um, hmm. All right, I'm gonna check it. I'm gonna listen to my own stream for a second. By the way, I assume you're, you're a human person and not literally a notice even though you have that name. Um, let me go ahead and type this out. Okay, live, excellent. Okay, can I hear myself? Okay, can I hear myself? I sound terrible. I sound terrible. And the four second delay means I'm getting extra echoes. And the four second delay means I'm getting extra echoes of everything I've said. Of everything I've said. But I can hear myself. Of everything I've said. But I can hear myself. I wish I couldn't. But I can hear myself. I wish I couldn't. This is freaky. This is freaky. Alright, I'm gonna go ahead and turn off the uh the listening to myself, and I, I right, will type a the, uh, message for you that says I, that I, I have was able to, uh, you that says that yeah, I have was able to, uh, okay, god damn, it's hard to talk over yourself, yeah. uh, okay, so I'm going to go ahead and type a little note here, um, I just checked, and it seems fine to me, but thank you for letting me know, let me know if it clears up, why am I saying this when I'm typing it? Um, and also let me know if you are a bot or, as I suspect, I guess I'm going to just have to say it, a human person. All right, there we go. So now we'll get back to uh, something that's even uglier, the satellites of Saturn. Okay, so this, the idea here is we take, we would do some sort of join between this uh, which does have the uh, NAFE IDs, and this, which also has the NAFE IDs, but in a form that's so ugly, 
Um, well, shit. Actually, they've done a much better job here of giving the satellite names in Roman numerals than they do in the... Thank you. Thank you very much, Mr. Notice 30. And I believe you've passed the Turing test. So um, it appears that um, you are a human or whatever. Okay. So I guess in this case, what I tried first with Jupiter was to use the Roman numeralization here to get the satellite IDs. Um, but it turns out they did a pretty bad... Well, actually, they didn't do... Okay, yes, I, I've been following... Oh, wow. That, no, 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 no. Following is always good. Follow and never watch. I don't care. That's. Uh, I, I'm hoping you can hear me. Um, I'm not going to type this out, but if you can't, if it just comes in occasionally, um, sorry. Um, Okay, so I'm just going to talk it out. It typing. I'm 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 fast for typing than I am at writing cursive or whatever, or writing manuscript or whatever. Um, but apparently, I'm faster at talking than I am at uh, uh, than I am at writing typing. Um, I guess. All right, so I'm kind of tempted to do it this the the other way. Um, hello there, Milkister Moo. Can you hear me? Uh, someone said they're having trouble hearing me. Uh, I listen to my own stream and I can hear myself. Now, I can sort of understand someone not wanting to hear me, but that's a different from not actually being able to hear me. There, there's a difference there. So if you can hear me, let me... Yes, thank you very much, Milkister Moo. Uh, I've always loved you. And um, except for Notice 30, you're the only one in my life. Or anybody else who's lurking in the channel. Uh, they're also uh, very, um, very wonderful people. So if you have any comments, questions, want to talk about something else, I don't care. I'm very lonely. You're, you're welcome for loving you. Uh, I hate myself for loving you. Can't. Oh, wow, I forgot the rest of the lyrics. That's a song by Joan Jett, Hate Myself for Loving You. Sadly, I forgot the remainder of the lyrics, except for the just part where she just says, I hate myself for loving you. Can't something something with the things that you do. Okay. So today we are attempting to get the, um, well, actually, we're sort of attempting to get the uh, radiuses of sat Saturnian satellites into spice. But realistically, what we're doing is wasting time trying to decide how to get Saturnian satellites into NAFID. Because there's multiple ways of doing it, and I've now spent more time trying to figure out how to do it than it will actually take to do it. So I'm going to go ahead and do this, this, bring up a spreadsheet program, LibreOffice. Uh, this is the harder way of doing it, but it's also, um, it's not also, it's not even the more fun way of doing it. So what I'm doing is I'm taking, cutting and pasting the Saturn, Saturnian satellites uh, page into, um, into a, into a Libra office spreadsheet like this. Um, I will go ahead and save this. Um, if I do this correctly, I can save it to the right place, even. Um, Saturn slash sat rig dot... I'm going to save it as a CSV file, even though it's going to complain at me. Um, because ultimately, we'll need it like that. Okay. So now what we're going to do here, now that we've saved it, we're going to get rid of this image, which doesn't belong here. What we really just need is the radius and the name. We're going to join on the name. And actually, we have to fix the name, too. This is a freaking nightmare. Now I know I didn't want to do it. Um, okay. Column B. Delete column. Okay, and then we're going to delete all the other columns as well, but I don't think there are any past this one. Okay. Um... Now we're going to do another save, and I keep forgetting I, I just overwrote my old file. I meant to do a save as, but whatever. Okay, and now... I've learned a lesson from the previous one, which is... Actually, now we can go and probably do the next step. Um, I don't think we need to do any more there. I think last time I may maybe got overly caught up in trying to do too much. Okay. So this file here, very ugly, but it does list the satellite names. 
followed by parentheses, followed by comma, followed by the three uh, lengths of the three axes that make up the triaxial ellipsoid that, wow, that I just got confused in the middle of that, uh, that give you the radius of the, the given moon. So the idea is we're going to, we're going to, um, join these against the ones given by comment minus R. But we're a little bit ahead of the game here because we do have previously, um, um, We do have previously some help here in, um, we've done this before, so we have some Perl scripts that we can't really copy because Jupiter and Saturn are two different planets, but we should be able to, um, we should be able to copy and edit from. Okay, so what we want now is we want to get from this file here, uh, we want to get just the satellite name capitalized to match it and the uh, triaxial radii, uh, and I think we can do that using, um, yeah, I think this is the one that'll do that. So not too bad so far. And we will take the uh, whatever we're calling this file. Um, sat org CSV. And I will I will take a hint from the um, the old ways of doing things. Back in the olden days, when we had a file that was had like raw data, and we changed the raw data somehow, we call that cooked. You can still see that in some Unix, um, some Unix uh, ma manuals. For example, the terminal has a raw and a cooked mode. So let's see if we can pull this off. Oh, do I, need I didn't save this. Wow, pretty damn impressive. Okay. And now let's look at cooked. Um, nope, that clearly, that sort of did what we wanted. Um, oh, actually, ha wait, 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 wait. I thought I changed that rig to have only two columns. I did not do that, apparently. I apparently biffed that completely. All right, so let's bring up LibreOffice again. Um, did I, I did save this, right? Oh, maybe I need to do a save as again, because the default save is ODT or something. Um, so maybe it, it's trying to save as, save as, yes, I'm going to replace it. All right, now let's see if that did it. We want two freaking columns. Um... Okay, so apparently, even though I've wiped out the other columns, sort of. Um, no, I haven't though. What the hell? All right. Uh, I get the feeling that maybe, maybe, maybe. No, it's in the right directory. All right, you piece of crap. Yes, I'm going to replace it. Uh, hang on. Did I? I mean, there's nothing here. Oh, wait a minute. What the hell is this? Oh, these are orbital parameters. I don't need these. So that's where we're getting the problem. So we're going to go ahead and delete all these orbital parameters. Jesus fucking Christ. All right, we're going to delete those rows. Now... That was a mistake on my part, I admit it. Now, I saved it again. Should automatically now be the way we want it. Okay, that looks hideous, but it looks like the way we need it to be. And so now we can run uh, one-liners, and now we can look at uh, the cooked version. Okay, the cooked version does have some issues with it, uh, but that's okay, actually, uh, because we, do, we didn't get rid of all, all the commas and bullshit like that. Uh, but that that's not a huge deal. We can we can either uh, tweak them now. Narvi, that's very close to the name of Navi, which is the guys who lived on Avatar. Okay, so I think I think we're good here. I think I sorted this too because when you use the Unix join command, the files must be sorted. So I did do that as well. Okay, so now, um, God willing, we do the same thing, 
with the uh, with the the files we get from. Let's see. Uh, oh. Oh. I'm sorry. I used the NAF IDs file to do that. So that might be acceptable. All right. So I used the NAF IDs file, which does also contain names. So that that works too. So we will grab this. Uh, Saturn is the sixth planet. So you got uh, moons will be numbered six zero one through six ninety eight. Um, blah 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 blah. And let's give this. Um, a name that's not quite that stupid. Sat naif IDs dot. Uh, it'll be CSV because I'm putting a comma in there. And we don't need to run this again. Again, I could have used a make file here and probably should have, uh, but I didn't. So, haha on you. Okay. All right, let's do that. Let's see what we get. Naif IDs. Gorgeous. This is exactly what I was hoping for. Saturn Berry Center, by the way, is 6. Saturn, by the way, is not 6. It's 699, but that's not going to matter to us because we're only looking at the moons for right now. Um, so I think the comet minus R stuff might only be necessary uh, if we're looking at moons that aren't one of these. Okay, so this is good so far. We've got um, two files. One has the moon names followed by the IDs. The second one has the moon names and their radiuses, which is what we want. So this is actually going pretty well. Um, okay, so now we want the join file. And this is the Unix join command, which acts like uh, SQL join, but it works on files, uh, which I thought was pretty amazing when I first saw it. Um, uh, and now I just use it as though it's not impressive, because like with most things, once you get to know it, you don't like it as much, which is why I got a divorce. Um, so we'll just call this the join IDs file. And this should be very close to what we need. Um, yeah. So what we have here is basically moon name, radius, and NAF ID of the moon. We need the NAF ID because that's how Spice thinks of things. Okay, that did not go as badly as I thought. Now we need to convert it to a form that uh, NAF can actually use. Um, and I, I don't know why I did two of them here, but I think we just go with, um, oh, I do actually know why I did two of them there. So these are going to be, hopefully this will give us like 90% of it. Okay, there might be an issue here. Uh, there is an issue here. Um, no, actually, let's see. Um, yes, there is an issue here that I did not deal with before the join. Um, it'd be nice if I were to like comment this, wouldn't it? We only are looking for the IDs of Saturn that are, are not already in Spice. We do not want to duplicate that. So what I did here, I made sure that all of the things that we looked at um, were in the file called no radi2, uh, which is... Um, which is now actually needs to be bun zip. I need to uncompress it because I can't. Oh, can I? I could do BZ grab. All right, hang on. Okay. Which has a list of IDs of the of uh, planets or sorry of objects in uh, that that Spice knows about but doesn't have, uh, but don't have any. Um, radius already listed. So we definitely don't want to double list the radius system. We do want to do an fcrep from this file, which is, okay, so fcrep, uh, da, 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 bz fcrep. I don't know if this will work if one of the files is compressed and the other one isn't. Uh, no radii, okay. Wow, this, this might be like, so we're going to, Take the CSV and get uh, sat naif unknown. So this will just be the uh, the ones that are for which we don't already have a radius. Let's see if this works. I get the feeling it might not. I think we might have. Oh, it is just BZ grep, isn't it? 
but I get the feeling VZGraph expects either all or none of the files to be... Actually, I don't think but this is going to work. I think this is going to... Well, okay, it's going to be... If it is VZGraph. Again, I don't think this is going to work. Mm, yeah, I think that was that's going too far. So I'm going to have to be unzip to the uh, file... Uh, there. It's not that big. I just b-zipped everything because it was getting a little bit too big. So let's, we'll just do a common f-grep minus f, meaning anything in the file this, here, do that. I know that didn't make a lot of sense. I'll explain it in just a minute. Alright, um, so unknown, so this should be a smaller list, and uh, one way to check sanity on this list um, is to sort by the second field. Of course, we're using commas as our separator, um, and the lowest value should be like 619, because if you look um, at the SPICE files, they have radiuses listed to 618, so I believe this is very realistic. Um, okay, so now that we've uh, carefully avoided that mistake, which I don't even know if it would show up on SPICE, which would be really bad, error messages are better than um, having something that runs but doesn't do what it's supposed to do is my opinion so now we can join um saturn cooked with saturn naif unknown and get saturn join ids yep definitely should have used a make file uh, saturn join ids and this should give us what we want uh, so the the moons of saturn that don't already have a radius assigned and it is okay that this format looks weird. Ooh, okay, hang on. None of them have X's in them? Whoa. Okay. All right, uh, Pomodoro time. Back in two and two. And we are almost back. And we're back. Okay, so this is the data that we need. Uh, I was a little bit confused because if you look at the uh, web page, you'll see several of the satellites have um, three dimensions because they're triaxial ellipsoids. But none of the ones I'm looking at do. But it just occurred to me that the ones that do have triaxial ellipsoids are already in spice. So it's probably a good thing that we don't have any uh, triaxial ellipsoids here. So what are we going to do with this is we need to format it correctly for C-SPICE. Um, and I wish I knew what the hell I was doing. Oh, there we are. And this, this is what this should do, except uh, obviously we'll run it with our, own, uh, with our own files. So it'll be sat join IDs. This still won't be perfect. To... Um, We'll call this sat000.txt because we are going to modify it. Um, and I'll probably forget to rename it, but that's okay. Okay. And now, I think we can get rid of this actually. I'll, I'll go ahead and minimize it for now, but I don't think we need it anymore. And so now, all right. So this isn't going to quite work the way it is because of the little tilde signs, although I think we can just. Um, 
search for and replace with nothingness. Well, that was easy. Okay, so this is the, the file that will add um, the Saturn, um, <laughs> the Saturn satellite radi to Spice, except there's a problem. Um, there might be a problem here. And, okay, so these are the newly discovered satellites. To be honest, I'm pretty sure they're, we're not going to see... Oh, hang on. Well, they're, they're called S2004, so they might actually show up um, in DE431. So let's go ahead and... This is, this is why I take the extra step for Jupiter. Some of its moons have radiuses listed, or radii. That's a much cooler word, radii listed. Uh, and they do appear in NAIF, but they don't appear in the... They don't appear in the NAIF IDs file, which is actually a little bit older. Uh, so I should probably have updated that at some point. So anyway, um, so to get those, we do comment minus R, spice kernels. I'm pretty sure this isn't going to work yet. You can only specify one file at a time. So 319. Um, yeah, there's probably a way to get these like correctly. I just have to sort of go less through them. Uh, this literally contains it for one satellite, uh, Aja, uh, and it, it cannot be pronounced. It is a satellite that has an um, uh, unpronounceable name. And by the way, it has no mass. Uh, or what this really means is that its mass parameter, uh, it's so light that you can ignore its mass, which, which is probably true given that it orbits Saturn, which is a very big, not very dense, but very big planet, and dense enough that it's still very heavy. All right, so now let's see if we can get, this is where it gets tricky. This will tell us the name and the NAIF ID, but it won't tell us the radius. Um, so to get the radius, we have to go over here and see if this piece of crap is listed. This is, it's not going to be, I don't think, oh, there it is, a Gion. Oh, come on. It's got to be the same one, right, it is 53, okay. I'm going to complain about that, too. Uh, I'm putting that in my NASA thingy complaint file. Um, you have to wonder if anybody's used these before, uh, that either they haven't noticed the complaint, they haven't noticed the problems, or they haven't reported them. Um, but it's also possible, because I, I, I might be the first person who's actually putting this crap um, into spice format. I don't think, obviously I'm the first person to measure the radiuses, but I might be the first person to be putting them into spice format. Then again, I might not be. Somebody else might be doing this. They just haven't released their work yet. Okay, so this one, um, because it's just literally a one-off, uh, we can say, oh, hang on. Hang on, hang on, hang on. Body 653. Oh. We already had that one. Very clever. Okay. All right, we'll do it. The next one, Saturn uh, 393. No, 368 is next in uh, made up random order. Um. Aha! Now these all look like they are uh, satellites we already have. So this is probably like. God damn it! Except for the last bit. 652, I'm pretty sure we already have. Obviously, I should be doing a check that's a lot better than just sort of skimming. Um, but I, I think, let's see. This is 19, is 1. And we have 30 lines. So 19 plus 30, uh, 49. So we are there are some gaps in here, I think. Yeah. There's a big gap in here between... Um, Two and uh, body th 632 and body 635. Um, I don't think it'll be in this file because I have the same reason it's, there's a gap there. There will be a gap here. So the 630s again have that big gap here. So th they're either in another file or we don't have them at all. But problematically, we have these sons of bitches. So let's see if we can deal with them. This is this is where it gets ugly. Um, and this is where it gets really ugly because I'm going to have to hand copy this, which is never recommended. Um, uh, 
so basically we're looking for the ID of 7, 12, well, you know, let's just take a look here. And these are going to be listed in a funky place. There we are. Oh, wow, they're in the same order. Um, so we have 3332. Don't worry, we'll, we'll clean this up. And then one, why are they 132? Oh, nice. Um, there are two threes listed in this file. No, sorry, sorry, these are different. Uh, so those are for the 2004 satellites. Let's get the 2006 satellites, one and three. I don't know why this numbering scheme is being used. Um, both of those are three. And now let's get 2007, two and three. And those are also both about three. I could just save myself some time there. Okay, um, so this we could we could actually we can actually do uh, fairly easily. Uh, let's go ahead and do it. Uh, it's going to be body. This sucker radii equals three three three, and I'm going to go and cut and paste this because the other three are going to be very similar. This is body six five zero zero. But also three 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 four one also three 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 the this is four five and it'll be two 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 because it's a little bit different okay and I get the feeling we're gonna get something similar here so I will go ahead and paste um, here as well we, we can get rid of this um, I, I'm so afraid someone's gonna find errors in these even though technically we found errors in NASA's stuff, so it's not like it's not like this is a huge deal. So this is going to be six five zero four eight. This is going to be they're all going to be three apparently six five zero five zero. So we got those six five zero five five. And if you're wondering, is there a way to check this that's better than me just kind of hand typing it? The answer is yes. We could we could um, we could in fact. Um, you know, convert between this form here, S2007 underscore whatever, and this form here, which is like S2007, um, S slash 2007. A little bit inconsistent, a little bit ugly, a little bit unhappy, um, but we could do it. Um, okay, so now we have those. And let's see what's next here on our satellite list. Saturn satellite 393 rocks. You, you gotta love it when they themselves are calling these satellites rocks. Oh, literally one satellite, PAN, 618, which I think we already had, actually. Um, so 6118 might not even, might already be in, um, might already be in Spice Without Us. Yeah, it is. That was pretty useless. Um, all right, what are we doing next? I guess just nine nine ninety three by itself. I always forget to do less, don't I? Okay. And here we have these look like again, most of these appear to be already in. Six ten through six seventeen, six thirty oh hang on. These might be the missing satellites. Um Yes, the missing six thirty two to six thirty five. Not all of them though, just all but one of them, just to confuse the fuck out of us. Um, 653 we should already have. Yeah, we do. Okay. So we ha now, if we can find body radii for them, that would be really fantastic. 632 radii equals, we don't know what it is. Uh, we're just going to make a little place to put it when we find it. Okay, so now let's look for methone. If it, they do give it that name here, good, they do. 1.6, which just seems like a really bizarre precision, al almost like someone decided it was going to be one mile and they converted it to kilometers. Uh, Pauline, do we have a Pauline in the audience? Oh my god. Okay, well, these are the measurements. And when you do have a triaxial ellipsoid, the measurements in spice, as you could probably guess, we just put spaces between them. 
All right, body 634. Do we have a polydusis? We do. And it's actually vaguely interesting. Um, okay. All right. So now we're still missing body 635. Uh, but I think we got that. Um, I think we got everything else in here, so we're probably okay there. All right, Saturn, we're done with 393. Why are these not in the same order as before? 425. Let's let's go crazy here. Okay, these look like they're um, well, they're, they're redundant. That's okay, actually. I mean, uh, it's possible to have the same ephemerides uh, for two different ephemerides for the same uh, satellite. 634 and 632, I think we nailed them both earlier. Uh, oh, no, we didn't! Oh, yeah, we did. Sorry. I was thinking 635, which we don't have here either. Yep. Okay. All right. So now, last and least, 428, which I think we found only had one satellite. Oh, no, 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 no. Here we go. This is going to fuck us over. All right, let's take a look here. We do have some of these. Um, so we need to figure out where the hell... Okay, so this is 45, well, 40, 41, 45. Do we have 65035 twice? Or did I just not look at it correctly? Shit. Mmm. I get the feeling I did something wrong here. Okay, and then we have these other ones that are, let's see if they're listed. Well, they have, yeah, they have NAF IDs that are above 65,000. And they do appear to be listed here. Um, well, they're down here, but yeah, they are listed. Uh, MOFO. Okay, I'm getting kind of tired of doing this now, actually. Um, I, I, it's more a question of I'm getting tired of um, cut and pasting these, when, it, and especially since there's inaccuracies involved. Um, when I get the feeling we could, from this file, uh, create uh, what we needed for a, a join. Oh, from this file and the other files that are similar to it, we could... Um, uh, excuse me. Uh, we could um, we could create something that's more accurate and less <gasps> less tiring, less prone to error. Um, so let me see if I want to do that. Let's see what we're doing here. We have uh, sat join ID. Okay, so sat naif unknown. This was the first one to get us uh, IDs, and then we could create, I guess, from the comment files a uh, file similar to this one. Um, and then uh, tweak it slightly so the join condition matches um, the. Well, I think this is. Uh, let's see. Oh, this does contain the other. This this does contain the other satellites. Um, does it? Yeah, it does. It contains 2004, 6, and 7, which I think are all of them. 2004, no, there's a 2009. I'm sure it's in here, I just don't see it. There it is. And that one may not actually be in NAFE yet. So we, we could do this. We could um, we could create um, a file from the comments uh, file of uh, Saturn um, and then use that to be a little bit more accurate. We still have to m make sure we don't repeat anything uh, because if, if Spice has numbers, they will be more accurate. Uh, so we don't want to override Spice's numbers. So I guess... Oh, I was tempted. Now I'm kind of getting tired of doing this now, but what the hell? I guess this would make a nice little... Uh, let's see. So the first thing we want to do is do this. Xorg's being run it on everything but just one at a time. And I want to see if that even works. I mean, that if that works, we'll just get a list of uh, all of them sort of splatted together. Let's see if that works. Good. Okay. 
Now we need a way to identify them as being, you know, the lines that are actually Saturn's satellites. Um, uh, so I guess we could say the second field begins with a six and has either two or five, some of them have five digits, has, begins with a six, um, has, well, two or, yeah, and some of them, I mean, some of them will get by mistake anyway, but that's, we just have to deal with it. Um, I mean, it is okay if we get some things that don't match, they'll just be ignored the way they should be. Um, alrighty, let's, let's just, well, let's go ahead and try that one. Let's go ahead and try something that's a, uh, Perl minus ANLE if, I'm going to move this bit to the left so you can see it, if dollar sign F1 uh, equal tilde uh, begins with a 6, oh, and I guess we could say is followed by just solid digits. Um, Uh, so right then we'll just print the line and we won't print any other lines. Um, so we, we can ignore things that have dots in them because NAF IDs won't have dots in them. Um, that looks pretty good actually. And uh, that looks good too. Okay, so now what we want to do is we want to print um, the name in capitals, comma, the NAF ID. Um, but we want to change something. We want to change these. I think the only change we need here is to change the underscore to a slash. I'm hoping that's it. Um, no, to a slash and a space. Okay. Um, Pomodoro time, back in two and two. And we are almost back. And we're back. Okay. Um, so what we want to do now is we'll get one step closer to this, which is we want to print the zero at the first fields, but not quite this way. Separated by comma, but not quite in this exact way. So let's see how far that gets us on along the line. I think that's actually correct, even though it looks kind of strange. Um, wait, something's wrong here. Uh, oh, I guess the spice kernels will include things that we've already looked at. So that's probably not surprising. In fact, the more I think about it, the more I realize we probably could have just used the spice kernels uh, because um, Because they will include everything that Spice knows about, kind of, by definition. <coughs> so our choice to use um, NAF ID's HTML file was a, uh, was a bad choice. Okay. So what are we seeing here? All oh, looks good, looks good. We saw some garbage early later, which I want to kind of look at. Yeah, this is not looking good. And these lines here. And so what we can do... <laughs> 
is we can cheat a little bit and print the line that they came from. And I think that's going to work because um, there's a new line already at the end of that. So let's see what this does and see how we got those lines. So we now have, nope, that I need a new line there. I guess there's an implicit chomp there. So I do need a new line. I can't just assume that the thunk, the dollar sign underscore, already has one. Okay, so most of this is looking pretty good. We'll take a look at the line. Okay, here we go. Okay, so this is where they have like a, a list of, uh, well, crap, apparently. Um, but we can ignore that. So th the other thing we need to do here, I think the only other thing we need to do here is... Um, is to change the, whoa, lass, I'm so desperate for a woman, uh, is to change the, um, okay, so we need to go for, to this format, and the format we have now, okay, so this is the format we want, it's going to be change s to s slash, and remove the space between the ear and the satellite number, okay, I think I can do that. Probably. Uh, so it's dollar sign F zero equals substitute. Now I'm, I'm, I don't know if it's going to let me change dollar sign F zero because it's sort of a a built in, but you can usually get away with shit like this. Uh, let's change S to S with a slash over it, but just do it once because we only want the. F Whoa, that's not going to work. Nope, nope, nope. We only want to change it. Okay. So we have to do this as a whole thing, because we don't want to change satellites whose names happen to begin with the letter S. It's going to have to be S, D4, um, let's be crazy here. I could have also done uh, backslash D, uh, open brace for closed brace, but this works too. Underscore, um, letter S, and then 2. If we see that, uh, we need to separate. We need to change it to s slash the same year number, and then just put doll. Um, uh, we still need the s there, and then dollar sign two. This might not work for a different reason. Hang on. Let's see if we can get this s as part of the grouping here. Dollar sign two slash. So if this works. Uh, we're in pretty good shape. And in fact, we could also sort of have ignored a lot of this. So, kind of a waste of my time. But that's okay, because that's what I do. Nope, S slash. Ah! S backslash slash. Okay. Um, I'm searching forward slash for a forward slash. Okay. There's something that looks wrong with those, but it might, I might be wrong. It might be actually correct, and I'm just seeing it incorrectly now. Oh, there is a space between the um, there is a space between the um, the digit and the s, so we can fix that pretty easily. Um, like that. And I don't think we need to print out the. Um, the dollar sign anymore. I'm going to go ahead and copy this because this was actually fairly useful for debugging. Um, but now we will just print what we need. Oop, uppercase. Wait, how did I lose my uppercasedness? Mm. Or am I just imagining that these were uppercase in the uh, in the files? Well, that one's not helpful. Let's see. Look at this one, they were uppercased. Okay, what the hell does this give us? Oh, they weren't uppercased, I'm wrong. Okay. Um. I mean, I could just do this, really, because print will let me do get away with that. Okay. Uh, need a comma. Okay. 
Okay, so this is all of Saturn's satellites um, in the form that should match these guys and the NAFE IDs. Except for these, which are just plain stupid. I guess the only problem here is these lines could, in theory, uh, interfere with the correct map. Well, actually, they couldn't because these aren't names. Um, Why am I still getting something that looks like these things at the bottom here? That is not cool. So I said dot substitute s followed by four digits followed by underscore s two digits and replace it with that. This is not cool. The only thing I can think of is um, one of these files has a um, is is using lowercase or something. So let me. Uh, the mess is. I mean, it's good because their pro their programs will handle all this, but a little bit inconsistent there. So let's see if ignoring the case will help us here. La 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 la. Yeah, I think that was it. Okay. So now we do need to sort this if we're going to use a join command on it. I'll do minus u because there are some duplicates and uh, presumably, hopefully, everything has the same uh, value as it did, you know, before. Um, so we'll say naif IDs from commt um, dot text. So this should create the naif ID join file part one. And that's what I probably should have been doing from the beginning. And at least when we get to Jupiter, uh, we'll get to uh, Uranus, which has almost none, so it's not really a huge deal. Uh, wait a minute. Oh, just to be consistent, I'll say sat naf, naf IDs from, uh, from blah, 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 blah. Okay. Okay, and the first three we can ignore because there's not, nothing named that. Um, Saturn is in there, but it doesn't matter. It's just not going to match. Um, how many do we have here, by the way? 85. Some of them are bad. Um, so it, that seems like a lot of satellites. How many satellites does Saturn presumably have? Not that many. Oh, actually, hang on. There might be more than we think. Okay, so now the other join file that we have is, that we still want, is um, right, we converted this to Saturn, right, the raw, the raw format was what we came out with from the spreadsheet, which actually should be okay. Oh yeah, we had to get rid of unprintable characters and other bullshit like that and all sorts of parentheses weirdness. Okay, so there's the cooked file. And now, the time you've all not been waiting for, we get to join the two files. And chaos shall erupt. Um, I'll just copy this, except what we're going to be copying is join uh, cooked with, oh shit. Yep, we still need to do an f grep minus f uh, for ones that are in um, to make sure they're all in uh, uh, okay in no radii two. There's a slight problem here though uh, because the grep could match five digit uh, satellites even if it doesn't match the three digit version because we're doing a grep we're not doing a grep hard match so that was fun we, we have another problem now okay uh, okay so I can't just do an f grep minus f because it well this doesn't matter but it m might match one of these by mistake so if 650s in there this is going to get grepped out but we actually want this to be in here um, so how do we deal with this well it's not really hard uh, mm, 
we basically need to create a list of um, second, and by the way, there is no second field here, second fields, and then compare it to the no radii list, and only use the ones that are in both the no radii list uh, and in the, in, in the list of satellites that we're listing. Um, fun, fun. And we can do that using join. Um, although very unusual use of join to basically confirm something is, um, confirm a number is in a given file. But we can do it. Um, and it's useful, it's not really useful anymore to anyone anywhere. We might want to go back and do the same process with Jupiter, but there are problems there also. Um, which would be helpful. Uranus, Neptune, and Pluto don't have enough satellites to make this a major issue. But let's go ahead and be... Okay. And it would be nice if I kind of said which ones we're not going to use anymore, but I'm not going to do that because it makes life a little bit too easy. Oh, all right. I will. Uh, find list of NAFE IDs from comment minus R of BSP files in Spice Groups. Okay. That's not really the first step. The first step is we, we have a spreadsheet, but that's okay. Um, and that is, oh, the only reason I don't want to put this into a make file is because make has problem with, uh, Perl's backslashing. So I might need to double backslash all of this. And that is, um, that is, uh, that is just hideously ugly. Um, Anyway, so that's why we're not going to do that, but we will find list of, and that will put it into um, list of new IDs. And I guess we could just, well, why don't we might as well sort that, right? Uh, since we don't need to, um, uh, and then overwrite sat NAFE IDs from comment.txt. The only issue here is going to be that we might end up picking some extra ones that we don't want, which we were okay with earlier, but m we maybe don't want to be okay with anymore. Um, since we're... The fuck? Um... Oh, yes, I had this where I was still printing the original uh, field because we wanted to use it for testing. We no longer need to do that, so we can do this. Okay, and now the things we might want to get rid of because they're, they're they're not correct and they're kind of bad. We also want to uppercase this, by the way. Um, I guess we can say if the second field is empty, we can uh, we can ignore it. Um, so first of all, I did make a lot of changes that I shouldn't have that I should have made earlier. So we'll do this this. Um, if F1 matches that, and, wait, 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 oh fuck, how did we get away with that? This shouldn't have worked because... Oh shit, okay, that's what I meant to do. Um, print UC of this, oh, I need a comma there too. That should work. I'm surprised that worked because I haven't, I didn't actually specify that the, oh, oh, right, right, because I'm using space as my delimiter. Um, So that should have worked. I'm changing the spaces to commas. So here, I guess I could say if there's a double comma anywhere in, well, shit. How do I want to get rid of those suckers? Uh, you know what, yeah, I guess we could say if, well, wait a minute, if dollar sign F zero, oh. This just checks that dollar sign F 
one is this. And I guess I could say dollar sign F0 doesn't match a string of digits. I don't think any of the moons have numbers in them at all, but to be safe. And then not. I could also do this using the Perl not instant thing in my juby. And not F0 matches nothing but digits. Okay. So real quickly here. Oh shit, I already did it. Never mind. So I could do a word count on this. I'm hoping to lose about three lines. Didn't lose any lines. Not good. And I guess the one the problem is, of course, this is not... Oh, what the hell? Should I be concerned that even though I dropped three lines, it's the same length? Oh, no, now it's... I'm going to pretend that didn't happen. Wait, 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 wait. Oh! Oh, hang on. Yeah, I'm looking at the wrong file. Okay, that didn't help. Um, so what is this? Not, not, dollar sign. Yeah, I guess that's not going to work because technically I don't know what dollar sign F0 looks like at this point. Um, so we're going to remove this test and this ampersand. Make sure I haven't broken anything. Okay. And then I guess I want to see... I guess we will go ahead and do the... Um, print out the whole line again, just temporarily to see what's going on. All right. Well, okay, wait, wait, wait. We should be printing out... Oh, I guess we... Okay. I see what's wrong. So that should be Dalton F0, but okay. Uh, Pomodoro time, back in two and two. And we are almost back. And we are back. And I've somehow managed to screw up my setup here. All right, it's fixed now. Okay. So we have a fairly minor problem here, but I'd still like to. Um, uh, I'd still like to uh, to uh, debug it. All right, and I think one problem is I can't debug it when I'm, when I'm doing the sort. So here we're just going to say uh, print this, and then I'll pipe the output to less. So 
see what's going on here. Looking good, looking good, looking good, looking good. Not looking good. Okay. So... Um... So I guess we're trying to see that S0 here. Um, well, let's, oh, this just prints out, okay, so why? Oh, we have this comma here, that's why. Uh, so S0 is gonna be numbers and a comma, we don't want it. Um, so we'll go back to this one. Fun with regular expressions. If F1 is equal to that, and and not F0 is equal to beginning bunch of digits, comma, end, then go ahead and do all of that. And this better fucking work. No, I don't need to less that. That seems like it's a much bigger th number than it was before. Because, wait. Oh yeah, I was still printing the original because I am I decided to create a separate line for debugging later in the process than I should have. So I'm an idiot, but you knew that. 110, okay, that, this looks better. Okay, now why is that not working? Mm. Why, oh why? So we're trying to figure out why this is not going to the slash format. Uh, F0 equals substitute. Oh, did I forget to put the ignore case here? Yeah. Probably would have taken less time to do this just manually. Um, hey, hey, there we go. 82 and they all look like they are somewhat reasonable okay so that's step one step two um, okay find which of these IDs doesn't already have a radii have radii, that's plural. Probably gonna get sick of saying radii at some point. So that should be, we join this file, and I'm hoping the no radii file is sorted, uh, but the more I think about it, the more I realize it might be sorted in numerical order, uh, which won't help. Because join requires things be sorted in, oh, Okay, now this is bad for a different reason. Oh yeah. So this is something I didn't consider. When I made up my list of no radii, it only includes the ones that I looked for, um, where I looked for, um, for moons and ran a program on them. Uh, so the problem here is gonna be that this list is actually a bit short. Um, so I'm not happy. Um, let's see. Let's see, let's see, let's see. There's a way to create one that, you know, just says everything that already has a radii um, in spice. Okay. This is getting ugly, but let's go ahead and do it for everything here. Um, find which, I'm gonna have to do a negation here. Um, what you can do with join, and there's a way to say, show me cases where there, there's no match. 
find which of these IDs already have radii. And we're going to do that with phew, basically the similar process, um, except we're going to do it with every single BSP file. That should be fun, huh? So let's just do this for right now and see what happens. Yeah, this is getting to be a nightmare. I mean, coronavirus, but bigger nightmare, of course, but this is kind of a nightmare. I find that hard to believe. Let's take a look again. Xargs minus comet minus R. The Earth is not the only thing that has a radius. Let's try this now. Oh shit, I know what's wrong. This is not the file that has most radii. Um, the file that has the radii is um, the pick files. This guy. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, so we could just actually do prep radii. The only thing that bugs me is I'm pretty sure pick 10 is the latest pick file. I mean, someone's created a sample 11 one, but it's not in production yet. Um, and I, I just, let's see if we can find it. So these are all the PC files. Now, 10 is the latest one. All right. Uh, well. <laughs> nope. These are leap second. TLS is the leap second file, as its name sort of implies. Okay, I guess we're going to have to do it with this one. Um, this is just like a freaking nightmare. Um, spice kernels. I probably shouldn't be using Well, I've used it till day before, so I might as well do it here. All right, let's see what that gives us. Is that what we want? Booyah. Oh, of course, uh, good. It's good that it's case insensitive because NASA is stupid and case insensitive. Um, okay. So then we could do uh, just body. Uh, actually, we'll do it lowercase. And something, a bunch, a bunch of numbers, the NAIF ID. And then radi, but we will make this, of course, case insensitive. Um, and we will say if this that you can match this, print the NAIF ID, which is dollar sign one. Okay, let's see what that does. Booyah! We probably need to sort and unique that, but I think I'm okay with that. And we're going to sort it in alphabetical order because we want to use it use it with a join uh, command. So so that's why. Um, now, in this case, I'm not going to, um, hmm, what is it I'm not going to do? Because at this point, I'm tempted to do all of the planets together. Um, I'm not going to put sat in front of it, because it's actually all of them. Um, it's almost rhymes. Nafe IDs with radi. Uh, so there's those suckers. And I do need to run this to get that to work. Uh, I don't know why I didn't... Did I not save this? I did not. Okay, let's try that again. NAIF IDs with radi. Uh, sorted alphabetically. Uh, I don't even know what some of these are. But now the question is, can we get all of the things that we have... Um, I guess this is going to be difficult because this would require getting all of the things in any BSP file uh, that have a NAIF ID um, and um, regardless to whether we have a radius or not. I'm kind of tempted to see what that would look like though. So let's do this real quick. We'll use DE431 part one uh, part two. Uh, okay. There might actually be a uh, 
so the comments file doesn't apparently always have a list of the bodies. I guess part one will. Not groovy. Okay, so there must be a way to extract a list of bodies, the correct way to do it, uh, from a BSP file. Obviously, um, you know, looking at the comments is one way to do it, uh, but that's, that's probably not the correct way. Um, so let me go ahead and go into, um, uh, let's see, Spice, Spice 64, C Spice, Doc. And yeah, most of these are called UG files. Uh, we can look at all of them, but let's see if we can find one that uh, has the word list in it. And then also the word body, or bod. Okay, let's... Uh, Naif body code. Okay, let's take a look at this. This might be useful. Um, actually, I think we're looking at the wrong thing, though. Um, da, 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 da. Oh, I was forced to use some IDs. Um, <laughs> little Easter egg there, very nice. By the way, there's also a Three Stooges Easter egg back there. Um, so this is, I guess, more the technical stuff. Um, these are the ones that are assigned to some sort of the most more obvious things, but I think I'm looking at the wrong place. I think I am looking, I should be looking at star UG. Um, those are the user guides for the, um, binaries they provide. Um, oh, I think brief is what we want. Um, yeah, solid. So let's work it on DE431, um, part two. That may be a little bit too brief. Mm. Like just the list of IDs, please. Ooh, hello. Uh, display summary in a tabular format. Treats all files as a single file. Now that, 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 that by itself is worth looking at. Now this I'm not using the minus A option. Oh. Cool. So I can still do that. If I use a minus A, apparently it will, um, it will not show me that I'm using different files. Summary for all files. That is looking pretty darn... I have no idea what the fuck these are. Um, oh, do they have the word body in front? No, these are body or bodies. So let's, let's, let's make note of this. This is kind of cool. And this is not... We're going to make a note of this in README stream. Where I'm putting everything, apparently. Um, I, I don't need the less, obviously. Okay, so this is pretty good shit. Uh, now let's see if there's another way to get just just the names, just the IDs of the, uh, okay, um, tabular format, mm. Mm. let's see what that does, I mean, it's, oh, apparently you cannot combine options back in these days. <gasps> Holy crap. That is some good looking shit. Hello, hello, hello. Oh, hello, Mr. T-Torp. Thank you for raiding with a party of three. I, I'm only very s sad and sorry that uh, this stream sucks. Hello, Mr. T-Torp. Thank you for... Hello, Natalo. Thank you for joining me. Hello, hello, hello. I wish I could offer you a better stream, but I cannot. Unless you want to suggest something. Hello, Spacey3D. I think those are all the three raiders. Um, oh, thank you, Natalo. I, I I don't think anyone has ever said that before, but okay, cool. So if you have any questions, comments, you want to do something other than what I'm doing, that's fine. I'm very lonely. I will. Uh, I am very, very susceptible to uh, peer pressure. So if you want to do something else, um, 
I w it's not it's not that it's it's bad because even if you knew what I was talking about it's still bad um, yes I'm very lonely it's very sad uh, I have only my pretend space objects to play with um, frog love sign okay I actually don't understand I mean I can hover over emoji to see what they mean but I'm very bad with emoji so I'll just assume that's a good thing the love signs always good less than three uh, that I know that's uh, an, an emoticon from way back when uh, OS frog I I've seen that stupid frog in a lot of different places I don't know what he does though um, or maybe it's a different frog I don't know but he apparently has some deep meaning that is connected um, that's fantastic um, what did you stream I might watch your stream if it's interesting let's actually see what the hell you stream I mean, I'm that I'm that bored we're gonna check that out if I can find my browser, there it is. Um, okay, the frog is your god. Okay, let's just see what the hell Ttorp just streamed. Uh, if you, you cannot outdo me in uh, st in uselessness of stream. Oh yeah, you're hosting me right now. I, I should have known that. Um, let's see if any videos here. Ooh, shiny. Okay, I don't want to see myself there. Let's see. Learn Python, but first eat. Um, probably a bad idea to watch a stream on my stream. And I'm actually going to find a Python. I love you, personally. Um, are these the... So these are like the... They all have the same name, but they're on different... Uh, they're different streams. Okay, and I think this notification is going to tell me... <whistles> well, no, it doesn't tell me what I thought it would tell me. Um... Uh, what's up with that? What's up with, um, so, oh, oh, okay, so this is what's meant to be, like, a single stream, um, by the way, it is Pomodoro time, as my Nightbot's about to tell you, but I'm not going to ignore it, because I have actual people in the stream, or whatever, so, so these were actually, like, um, oh, okay, so you have three, this, this, it says you have three videos, so let's take a look, okay. So this one actually looks like it was on a different day. Learn Python with me, and then it looks like you did a one and a half hour stream that got split. Uh, you can look at clips. There's something more fun there. Um, well, no clips were created in this time period. Uh, let's just look at all of the clips then. Oh, here we go. Uh, let's take a very brief look at this. Um... Is that you, dude? T-Torp, down there? Okay, I'm gonna have to... This is kind of weird trying to stream a stream, so... Uh, uh, so is that you down there, or is that somebody else down there? I'm the guy with the... the um, uh, let's see... Yes! Okay! You look good. I, and I say that in a way that's meant to be polite, uh, but not gay. Not, not there's anything wrong with being gay, but I'm not gay, and if I were, I probably wouldn't find that attractive. No offense. I guess that is pretty offensive. Um, okay. So, uh, again, I'm going to go back to what I was doing here, unless you guys... Um, unless you guys... Okay. Thank you. You're quite welcome. And I'm sure Natalo... Um, let's see. Oh. I am from and in the city of Albuquerque, New Mexico. Woohoo! Um, Natalo, I know I've met you before. I don't remember uh, anything about you. We met in another stream. Um, I could go visit your Twitch page. Let me do that real quick. That 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 should be that just show you how that's kind of like really uh, very rude of me because it's it's like I know nothing about you, but except I do remember you have a page. Um, um, oh, cool! Double host. <laughs> we, I think we have a um, um, a host recursion there. Um, okay, I know I've seen you before. Uh, definitely have seen you before. Um, I don't remember when though. Um, I was not, unfortunately, making weather simula. I might have been making weather simulations at one point, um, but that's not the crux of my work. Well, I wouldn't call it work. 
I was doing maps at one point. I was doing some other stuff. I was, a lot of space stuff. A lot of astronomy. Um, yeah, I know I've watched one of your streams, though. Either I've watched one of your streams or you were on somebody else's stream that I watched. Um, let me check something real quick here. Um, which hopefully will... Okay. Um, okay. I don't have any... My this I'm on my other machine, so you can't see what I'm doing. Uh, all right, so no, never mind. Um, hello, Natalo. Thank you for hosting me. I think I think you already were hosting me, to be honest. I think if you host someone who's hosting someone, it just goes all the way through. Um, or maybe it doesn't. I don't know. Maybe there is no host cascade. Thank you very much for your hosting as well. I am honored. Deeply honored. Um, I'm gonna see who's in chat right now, uh, just just out of curiosity. Oh, cool. Um, and somewhere it does tell me how many people are in chat, but that number doesn't agree with any other number that Twitch has. Okay. So, guys, what do you want me to do on stream? I've told you where I am. I'm in Albuquerque, New Mexico. It's a uh, beautiful uh, city. If you don't know the definition of beauty or cities. Uh, it's a hellhole. Um, we have had no cases of the coronavirus in this city, but we've had three in the state so far. Um, uh, and, and no reported cases at least. So, so not in, so far so good, but we probably will get infected soon. And in fact, oh, oh, I was going to say, <laughs> if you're here right now in Albuquerque, Screw this stream thing. Let's get some lunch. Well, um, I shop online, and yesterday, just without even realizing what I, you know, what was going on, I just happened to be running low on liquid soap. Um, so I just antibacterial liquid soaps. So I just sort of put that in my shopping basket, um, and n they had none. I mean, they they let me put it in my shopping basket, but when I, you know, when they actually order, when you actually do the order, they tell you what items are unavailable. No soap at all available. No liquid soap. I am not worried about the virus. I think my, uh, my um, I believe I have a little Easter egg in here that I can now un-Easter eggify. Um, at one point I thought maybe the coronavirus was something the environmentalists did because they want people to be out and about less, reduce pollution, reduce uh, global warming, all of that stuff. Uh, which isn't actually a bad idea. I mean, even if it's, you know, even if they did it, um, I, I don't object to less pollution. I don't object to people working from home. I don't object to st students not going to school. Um, yeah, so I don't know if, I mean, there's a lot of people who would benefit from this, you know, if it's not true, and I also misspelled Corona, nice. Um, but I don't, honestly don't think it's a conspiracy theory because, um, well, if it is, it's very, very compelling because a lot of people are doing stuff about it now. Um, and of course, as always, whenever I promote conspiracy theories, I po point out that it's possible they didn't actually do it, but that they are like in favor of it. They're they're sort of over promoting it so people will stay home. And again, I don't really think there's anything wrong with that because I, I kind of want to live in the matrix eventually. Um, and this is the first step to doing that, you know, interact internet interaction um we're not quite there to where we can pretend to be somewhere else uh, we don't have our holodecks yet um but we're getting there and so this might be a uh, if this thing lasts long enough which i don't believe it will to be honest i think it's just a like a flu maybe a little bit more a uh, little bit worse than a flu um but i do think that in three weeks or less we're gonna look at this and go what the hell were we worried about um I just, I just don't, I mean, people are dying from it, yes, but people die from influenza as well. Um, and if a lot of people have been infected, as they think is, might be true, and only about, I mean, it's still a tragedy, but only about 3,000 have died, that's not a lot of people when you compare it to the number of people in the world. Um, so, so that's, um, my take on it is people are overreacting, um, and I could be wrong. I could be wrong. Um, the the June and again, you know, I'm 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 
I don't really want to keep track of stuff. Keep be, I don't really want to be on top of this, but literally everywhere, everything, every email I get is about the freaking... Yeah, exactly. People are going to now adapt my lifestyle from the lifestyle they've already had for completely different reasons. Um, and it might be a ch chance for me to actually get to meet some people uh, because in real life, people do not like me. I mean, they don't like me that much online either, but I'm, I'm, I'm more tolerated online than I am. Okay. Swedish. Uh, okay. <whistles> wow. So you're, you're going the other direction with it and thinking that maybe uh, people should be paying more attention to it. And, and I guess that's the one problem is if you're wrong, it's kind of bad, but not that bad. If I'm wrong, it could be, you know, uh, everyone could die. But I have to, well, lots of people could die. But I have to admit at some level, um, you know, if it wipes out humanity, I wouldn't be that unhappy about it. I'm not crazy about humanity. Um, don't really like people that much. So if this, you know, I'm not rooting for the virus per se, but I'm just saying, I don't think humanity's worth that much. Um, better, so yeah, exactly. And, and that, that's, that's reasonable to a point. Um, the only thing I'm worried about is, you know, um, banning large gatherings, this sort of stuff. It, it, it smacks of authoritarianism. Um, and I think what's, what's really nice though is right now it's like, you know, groups of over a hundred or 350 in New York, they're still pretty big groups. So it's not like, I'm not sensing that they're trying to, um, sort of lock down everybody and, and promote authoritarianism. Um, but the concern is this, this, uh, scare could be used for negative purposes. Um, but it does seem like a legitimate scare. So, I mean, although I don't really understand. Uh, okay. Uh, yes. That's what I was thinking. I think the reaction is is much worse than the virus. That's my take on it for right now. Um, so, um, and honestly, I guess what bugs me here is I don't see why gatherings of 100 people are safe, but 101 people are not. I mean, it does seem like, you know, it's more a question of who you contact. Absolutely. Absolutely. Uh, agree. And I would say by governments as well, although I don't really see, I don't really see governments taking as much advantage of this as they could, but it might be like a slow thing. It might be one week from now, uh, you know, we'll all be locked down. Um, uh, oh, T-Torp, are you from, uh, are you from Sweden as well? Um, I'll make some offensive comment about how well you speak English for a Scandinavian person. Um, but, but you do, I mean. Um, cool. Uh, all right. Good to have two Swedish people in here. Um, I just want to say I love Sweden. I love Stockholm. I, I even love the Stockholm Syndrome. Um, I, I don't, you know. Um, Sweden has midnight sun sometimes. Probably not where you live. I, I understand the midnight sun is in the northern part of the nation, uh, where there are fewer, uh, fewer residents, um, part of Scandinavia and well, that's true. That is, that is true. But at the same time, I mean, your English is coming off as being flawless written English and very quick. I mean, not the kind of, um, you know, I mean, if, if you didn't speak English, if you couldn't type English well, you would be slower than you are now. And so it's coming off as being perfectly, perfectly English. Um, and yeah, you're welcome, Bigly. And I feel like a jerk saying that because, I mean, you know, someone pointed out um, that European high school students speak English better than Americans speak English, at least in terms of, you know, doing it correctly. Um, so that, that was kind of disappointing. Well, it's not just it's not surprising, though. Um, but yeah, so I've heard that Europeans really speak English really, really well. So I, I really shouldn't have said that. That's uh, it's very expected, very wonderful. Um, now, some, some let's, let's throw out some more conspiracy theories here about the coronavirus. So far, I don't know if they've noticed any sort of trend, like it, uh, it uh, infects or harms certain types of people more than others. Um, you know, I've seen that too. Actually, I've been on streams with uh, Swedish people and actually all of Europe 
and they speak English to the point that unless they actually tell you that they weren't, um, you know, that uh, English isn't their native language, you wouldn't know. Uh, somebody yesterday had to tell me that their Polish was their native language, and I couldn't believe it because they spoke English flawlessly. Uh, and that person was, I guess I can advertise them on my own channel, um, person I don't remember. Um, add it something. Let me, let me see if I can find them. Let's see, here's a list of all the people I thought, whoa. Yeah, no, 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 no. Don't do that. Um, unfortunately, my setup here is a little bit different. Um, anyway, screw it. Her name is Add It Something. Let's see if I can... Nope, that's not what I meant to do. On my, on my, um, on my main machine, this actually comes out as a bunch of, um, you know, here are some people I'm following. Um, this comes out as a whole list with uh, names listed, but it might be that because I follow you, T-Torp, um, because I have a smaller screen here, that might be why they're doing that. Anyway, screw them. Um, yeah, and I am I am one of those older people, actually. I'm 65, and um, so if I get it, there's a good chance... Mm, oh! Yeah, that's what, I that's what I was looking for here, is usually there's either an arrow or you can click on... There's a little uh, bar that you can move and get this to become bigger, because um, I do not recognize a lot of my um, fo people I'm following by just their icons. Um... But I don't know if it's me or if it's just because I'm using a smaller screen. I'm using a smaller Firefox, and my whole screen is smaller than my, my main screen. Um, don't forget to turn off the stream after you raid. Oh, yeah, otherwise I guess you, you keep going. Um, oh, can you do that? I thought once you raided, uh, it automatically redirected people. It turned the raid into a host, but apparently it does not. Um, so what the hell are you streaming, T-Torp? Let's take a look at how you're mangling my wonderful viewership. Um, no, no, you're hosting me. You're fine. Um, yeah, so the, uh, I guess the other, uh, conspiracy here is, if it turns out, okay... Strange. Maybe you hit the streaming button or something. Um, if it turns out that this virus um, affects, you know, affects more only a certain kind of people. I mean, right now Asians are more affected, but that's just a locality thing that has nothing to do with race. But if it turns out that there's like a certain kind of people that it affects, others don't affect. I'd be sort of curious to see what what happens then. Um, about half the people will say, "Aha." I told you those were bad people, they can't handle the coronavirus, where the other half of the people will be like, aha, someone manufactured this virus to harm those people. Uh, so that should really be interesting. Uh, actually, it wouldn't be that interesting, it'll just be kind of creepy. Um, okay, questions, comments. Uh, uh, I was going to say something about Sweden, but I think it's about Finland, so I, I get those confused. Um, Angry Birds is from Finland, not Sweden, right? Because um, they did a little piece on their country. But I'm pretty sure Angry Birds is Finland. Um, well, you know, that would be nice to believe, but, like, sickle cell anemia, for example, only really affects black people. Um... I mean, I, I, I believe in equality, but I think at, at a blood level, um, at a cell level, we are different. Uh, we have different DNA. And, I mean, I would say it's theoretically possible to create a virus that, you know, targets certain DNA patterns. Um, and, you know, maybe it requires that bit of DNA to reproduce, like a, that's a catalyst or something. Um, so I could see where you could do it. I don't know if we have, I don't think we have the technology to do it yet. Um, no, that's true. It does not only if, um, is, okay, I guess that might be true. 
Okay, let me retract that statement. I guess I was using correlation as causation, which is, I always advise people not to do that. Let me go back and say, I think that if you were, that race can be determined from DNA. Um, and presumably that's what all these, uh, you know, genetic testing firms like 23andMe do. You send them your spit. I don't know why they don't collect blood. I guess people are less, I, I don't mind, you know, giving blood because I'm a diabetic and I stab myself on a regular basis. Um, mm, okay, interesting. I did not know that. I know very little about viruses. Um, okay. Um, now, you would think this would make me, like, retract my statement, which I'm kind of doing, but now I'm sort of interested in thinking, could you make a virus that, um, uh, that could infect only a certain... Um, a race of people or a group of people. It doesn't have to be a race. It could be like, you know, uh, short people. It could be people who are anything that blue-eyed people or, or gingers. We could make a virus that only affect gin, infects gingers and no one would even care. I mean, that would be like, you could get research funding for that. Um, so yeah, uh, a virus that only affects uh, redheaded people. Um, and that, that, you know, no moral issues at all there, no ethical issues at all there. Um, from my understanding of viruses, and, and, and I could be very wrong, is they basically reproduce by, uh, they're, they're essentially, they're chemicals, they're not really living creatures, but they reproduce by taking like the, you know, the cell stuff that's floating around inside of us, uh, like whatever ACTG are, I always get them wrong, adenine, cytosine, tyrosine, and the gliosine, the gliosine isn't right, glucosine or something, but anyway, and they basically add them and they chunk them to themselves. Well, I was kind of joking when I was saying that redheads, uh, because they're sort of the running joke about redheads not having souls, um, so that was more of an insult towards redheads, not, not a real... I am going to skip Pomodoro this time, because there are actual people here. Um... Yeah, gingers ass. <laughs> You're Swedish. You don't have to. You don't have to pretend to to defend gingers. Um, yeah, it's interesting. It's interesting what bi what viruses do. And um, <laughs> hey, it's telling me to move around. Um, the rest of you are free to. Um, the Pomodoro method uh, suggests that you're more efficient at working if you take a break at regular intervals. Um, I happen to do it at 20 minutes, some people do it at 30 minutes, but the idea is you literally stop whatever you're doing. Um, you know, and I, t I do it by walking around, uh, for like a walk around for a minute or two minutes. Um, and then when you come back, presumably um, you will have a, you know, just the fact that you left the problem and came back to it uh, might help you either, you know, get better energy for it or help you um, you know, if you have, if you've been stuck on a problem, you could solve it, or you can just realize that you've been stuck on a problem and suddenly say, wait a minute, I've been working on this problem for way too long. I need to stop doing this and do something else. It basically forces a break into your schedule. Um, yes, that is exactly, wow. Yes, that is exactly the problem. You could, I, before I did this, I stared at a screen for eight hours, literally to the point where uh, it was morning when I started and it was dark by the time I stopped didn't even use the bathroom and the bathroom totally works for that too If you go to the bathroom uh, for just a second and come back usually that breaks the sort of uh, whatever whatever rabbit hole you're stuck in um, So I used to think but going to the bathroom obviously, you know um, You probably don't want to be doing that as often as you need to get up and take a break So it's been very helpful for me a lot of times. I will walk away come back either see a really easy solution to what I'm doing or realize that um, what I'm doing is, is a rabbit hole and you know I could continue on it and sometimes I do but at least getting that perspective and knowing oh hey this is a this is something that's taking a long time and it's not trivial uh, it's certainly not taking the five minutes I thought it was gonna take so yes that is the Pomodoro method I didn't know what it was called either I actually started doing it uh, before I knew what it was called uh, and then I discovered that people have named it um, so that that is interesting. Okay. Other questions, comments, uh, 
rude suggestions. Um, I don't stream my face, I stream a screen, so dares are probably not as exciting as they would be otherwise. Um, well, you go for it, but I, I, I've just once I've decided not to do it, I'm <laughs> I'll do it next time. I'll do it in 16 minutes and 40 and 35 seconds. Well, the machine did. Yes, it did actually. Um, Nightbot, <laughs> Nightbot is my is my is my dominatrix. That didn't sound right. Nightbot is my leader. We must follow it. Um, now, usually, the, the, when I'm talking with someone, it's not really a big deal because that is sort of a break from staring at the screen. So that's not a huge deal. Um, so I don't I don't do Pomodoro when someone else is here. Occasionally, if I if I'm like really very active in doing something and it's not like I'm stuck on it, I will skip also uh, because that, you know, sometimes you want to hit that productivity. So ugh, you're not going to get me out of this chair for right now, but anything else, not anything else, <laughs> that would be insane. Some other stuff you might get, um, you might get me to do. Um, so let me know what you want to see, what you want me to do. Well, I mean, see within the limited, um, Ooh, well, well, well. Um, yeah, I'm at, I'm at the age where I think uh, I don't brag about doing exercise anymore because it's like I sat in a chair and did nothing for three hours. I have groceries delivered. I have food delivered, well, other food delivered as well. I'm actually kind of, and this is, this is actually kind of true. Um, if this chair... If I could move it around easier, which I sort of, and, I can, and if I could climb stairs, which it can't. If this chair had a way to go to the bathroom without getting up, I would probably just literally live in this chair all day. And if I could it turn into a bed, th that would be it. I would just need the chair. Nothing else. Um, so my, my goal is to become as immobile as possible uh, to the point where, like in the Matrix, you know, sort of like that, um, to the point where, no, 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 it's fun. It's it's cool. You're you're minim you're maximizing your energy usage. This is very very efficient. I am not contributing to entropy in the universe because I'm literally doing nothing. In fact, the chair that would be such. A, it's, you know, someone's got to come out with that. The only problem is, you you have to connect it to something, I guess. But um, I don't. I know who PewDiePie is. I've heard of him. I don't know what's amazing about his chair. Um, but yeah, and I mean, I would like to have this chair to where, you know, if people delivered food to the door, uh, a little robot guy would pick up my food and bring it to my chair. Because that, that is, you know, getting up and answering the door and opening the door and saying hi to the guy and all that is, is tedious. Oh. How custom, is it as good as the custom chair I'm designing? It probably isn't. I mean, they do have, like, portable toilets already. That's the only, I mean, the only question I guess is, you know, do I want to be sitting on a bunch of poop? Uh, I mean, it's in, in, it's inside of chemicals and stuff, but I mean, that might be like the one thing that, uh, that it would gross me out. Now, actually DoorDash is already offering an option now, uh, where you can have people leave food at the door. You don't because because of the coronavirus, but I mean, the cool advantage is you don't have to interact with humans at all. You can have your food delivered and people, you know, don't interact with people. Um, and then the only thing that's left to do is really get some sort of drone to, to carry that food inside for me. So I don't have to even make contact with the outside world. That is the dream, which is pretty sad because I'm an astronomer. You would think that I would like to go out and stuff, but. I don't mind going, going out at night is a little bit better than going out in the day. I am very introverted. I am int J on the, uh, INTJ on the, uh, the Myers-Briggs testing. Uh, I, and, and not only introverted, I'd, I'd like to make this uh, very clear. I also hate people. I mean, I like you guys because you're in chat and you're talking to me. And even if you had voices, yeah, I did say that, didn't I? So now you've caught me within a contradiction here. 
contradiction number one, I like to pretend that if people came and visited my town, I would go out with them, but I wouldn't. At the same time, I hate all people, so I wouldn't. So I guess that is sort of a... Um, you found a contradiction because... Crap. I need to work around this somehow. Um... Mm. Interesting thought. Um, I, I sort of have the other feeling. I believe that back in the caveman days, I, I don't even know who we were cavemen. I, I think a lot of our behavior back in those days were very, was very self-centered. I mean, you know, if you needed to kill someone because you wanted to, you killed them. If you wanted to have sex with someone, you did it. I mean, unless there was a bigger guy who would kill you. Um, we didn't really have the concept of, of society, what's right and wrong, uh, you know, legalism, all that stuff. So I think society is sort of trying, you, you know, it's sort of a conflict between our higher brain functions and our sort of uh, instinctual behavior that we had uh, when we were cavemen. Um, the I mean, and the question you could ask really is, are we better off in society as a species than we were as, um, yeah, oh, absolutely. That's, yeah, absolutely. This is, if people keep it under this little cover here um, of, of niceness, but then, you know, when things get serious, um, we have our flight or fight reaction, we get, uh, we have our, um, yeah, no, that's definitely true, I think. I think fundamentally the three emotions are anger, fear, and lust, uh, and everything else is sort of built on top of those. So, and when it when it comes down to it, yeah, I mean, that that is you know we we lose that sort of veil of politeness, um, which again makes me wonder if society is. I don't think society is as stable as we think it is. I think society could break down very easily. Uh, and the coronavirus might do it. This might be the thing that wipes out, this might be the thing that, you know, if it creates enough shortages, if it creates enough problems, people could revert to just, you know, um, killing each other and and uh, for going back into tribes, becoming tribal again. That could be true. That could be true. I mean, some people believe... Um, it's more a question of having our basic needs met. I mean, the caveman, you needed to eat, you needed shelter, you needed to live. You needed to run away from the lions. Um, I guess lions weren't everywhere. But, um, I, well, I think that's, that was probably true in, in early society, and now it's true again. But the problem, of course, is now we have things that have nothing to do with life. I mean, we have food, shelter... But now we have iPads, and not to pick on iPads, and Androids, and computers, and internet. All the stuff that we don't really need to survive, but makes us greedy because we, we want it. Um, and, and arguably the problem is we're too comfortable. If we were still looking for food and shelter and those basics, we wouldn't have time for iPads and stuff. Um, uh, let's see, good and evil, contrary act. Thank you. I would agree with that statement, T-Torp. Oh, there's more. Um, oh, don't even... Okay, now you're getting into... The first part of your sentence is beautiful. Um, the second part of your sentence <laughs> is really hard to answer. Um, according to Einstein, all inertial reference frames are the same. So if you're not accelerating, you can consider yourself at rest. Um, we are, sort of. Um, so if you're not accelerating at all, um, if there's two frames that are not accelerating, even if one is moving with respect to the other, Einstein tells us we can consider both of those frames to be at rest. Uh, not, there's a, there's a famous, a Peter Duffield, uh, is a famous astronomer, but he's very controversial, um, and I know him, and he claims uh, there's something there's something called cosmic microwave background radiation, um, and we're moving at about 300 meters per second to that. 
He claims that the cosmic micro microwave background radiation, at the point where that's not moving, that is the true stillness of the universe. Um, but that is contradicts Einstein, who says um, that that doesn't work. There's no fundamental zero speed. Now, we're accelerating in several ways. Um, if you're standing on the Earth, which I believe Sweden is still part of the Earth. Um, no, that's what I was about to do. Um, yeah, we, we, that, that's, again, it's not the velocity, it's the, it's the acceleration. So if you're standing on Earth, and I said Sweden is part of the Earth, uh, you're being accelerated downwards. Mm, probably not. Um, we, we I, I don't know. I'll, I'll just say I don't know that. I can tell you about the kind of accelerations I know about. If you're on Earth, gravity is pulling us down. Uh, obviously, we don't go through the Earth, but there is that acceleration. Um, and the normal force of whatever you're standing on prevents you from falling through the Earth, but that is definitely a way we're accelerating in. Um, the Earth is rotating. That's a form of acceleration. The Earth is revolving around the Sun. That's another form of acceleration. And the Sun itself is orbiting the center of the Milky Way, which is another form of uh, acceleration. And the biggest acceleration we feel is gravity, by far. Uh, the other effects, we can't really, we can't really even feel them. Um, but gravity doesn't move us because we happen to be standing on, I mean, unless we're falling through something, uh, because we, there's a force that, you know, that holds us above, holds us up and keeps us from falling through the earth. Um, so, and now the, the question you're asking, is the Milky Way galaxy itself accelerating? Uh, maybe, probably. Um, but that's a harder question to answer. Uh, we are not getting further away from the Andromeda galaxy. There's this local group of galaxies that we are not getting further from. So we're not accelerating away from them, but it does look like we're accelerating away from galaxies that are further away. Um, but, you know, th it's hard, I mean, it's very hard to measure that acceleration. Um, if you could somehow turn off gravity and all the other acceleration, you could measure it, but it would be very, very small. Even the acceleration due to our revolution around the center of the Milky Way is very, very small. Uh, and then acceleration uh, through free space is, is insanely hard to measure. Uh, yes, that's exactly it. Well, gravity is pulling us down. The normal force of the floor, uh, and, and you know, I, I think I should explain the normal force because I think a lot of people use it and don't know what it is. Uh, basically, the normal force on what you're standing on, it's the electrical, it's the electricity that's keeping it s solid together. Um, solids are held together because of the electrical force between their molecules. If they didn't have that, they would disintegrate. Um, so when you're standing on something or even pushing something, what you're doing is you're sort of, dis you know, you're disturbing its molecules, you're moving some of its molecules, but other molecules then, you know, because you're moving two molecules closer together, the uh, energy, the, um, the electrical energy between, the, repel the repelling energy between the electron shells of the two molecules increases because when the distance between two things decreases, the electrical force increases uh, by R squared. So what happens is you're squishing some of these molecules, you're moving them out away, but the other molecules are pushing back and um, that's why you don't fall through the through the solid. Now, the other thing is you are, however, deforming the solid. Uh, and I think engineers refer to this as either stress or strain. So yeah, if you were to stand on the floor, well, it would have to be for a very long time, you would eventually put a dent in it. Uh, and then eventually you would fall all the way through it. Um, and that's not a huge deal because we don't, we're not that heavy, but when you're doing like machine work and stuff, that is an issue. Um, when two things are touching each other, they are placing a stress or a strain on each other, and eventually that will lead to um, one of them collapsing. So that's why we have, you know, bridges collapse and all this good stuff, um, cumulative force, uh, everything, whenever you touch something, you're making it slightly, you're making the electrical forces in it slightly weaker. You, they have to, um, you're, 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 you know, it, you're decreasing its life very slightly because you're, um, because that is energy you're giving it, and it has to sort of compensate for that energy. Um, and if you've ever taken something and like bent it back and forth until it breaks, that's kind of what I'm talking about. 
Um, okay, so that's electricity, the universe. Um, I'll say some. I can say some stuff about. I don't know a great deal about Sweden. Let me let me just see what happens if I plug Sweden into um, Wolfram Alpha from the command line. Sweden officially. The, you have a king. You're connected to Denmark through a tunnel. Uh, not see if they became if they went exactly back to the original form, that'd be great. But they only get approximately back because otherwise, um, otherwise you wouldn't be able to touch anything, because when you put your hand on something, there is a resistance between you and whatever you're touching. The electron shells are resisting, um, but the fact that you can put your hand on it, so so you dis you sort of disturb the top layer of atoms a little bit, and that effectively disturbs everything. Uh, throughout the uh, throughout the solid, because all the the atoms have to change positions slightly to compensate for the fact that you're touching it. Um, not not a lot though. Um, but but th that's the, that's why someone says you know if I push on something really heavy and it doesn't move, physicists will tell me I've done no work on it. But I know I've put energy into pushing it, and the energy goes into uh, deforming, you know, pushing on the molecules of the thing and making it slightly weaker. Cool. I'm, I'm glad you guys have a tunnel to Denmark. That is that is really cool. Um, and ha, um, so you guys, ha, you have you guys, but is your king like the British king, and he doesn't get to like chop off people's heads? You know what? Let me look up stress and strain really quickly because I f always forget which one's which. But this is the like big concept about how just touching stuff, and they always go together. Stress and strain. Um, uh, yeah. All right, I did say I would go next time, so this time I am going to walk around. I'll be back in two minutes and two seconds. And we are almost back. And we're back. Great. I hope you guys are on a walk. I'm going to try to find uh, an image for stress and strain, which might be more... Basically, when you push on something, that's what you're doing. But let's see. This is sort of a pet peeve of mine, because um, physicists will say... I don't know if anyone's listening, but I don't care. Uh, physicists will say that when you push on something, you do no work, which is true, but the energy just doesn't, like, die. Thank you. Welcome back. The energy just doesn't go away, because that's what they make it sound like. You push on something, and, and the energy that you expend just disappears into nothingness, which is not true. It, um... <laughs> elastic deformation, that's when you push something in it, and it, um, and it, and it bends more easily than something that... Jesus Christ, well, how far out do I have this? Jeez. I'll cover up the chat. Um, I'm trying to find a good demonstration of stress and strain. And apparently I'm using terms that are too technical. Um... Let's see if I can find the physicist. 
Okay. This is the thing physicists like to say. You do no work on it even if you push on it because the wall doesn't move, which is true. But I want to see if they mention anywhere that this is not like... The wall is not like totally un... you know... The wall is affected by your push. Um, unfortunately, I don't think we're going to see it here. Um, And I'm trying to show that... <sighs> I'm obsessed with this, I guess. Let's see what you guys are saying. Um, uh, let me... Him. Yes, agreed. Like, no air resistance, no friction. Yes, that's exactly my point. Um, you do deform the molecules because... Energy can be, well, I mean, it can be created by burning things, but you can't just have energy disappear into nothingness. That's impossible. Um, did, I, did I miss somebody saying hi? Oh, hello! Rolf, you said that wonderful thing about uh, physics. Hello, hello, hello! Um, yeah, this is, I do that too sometimes. Like, I, I start preparing food, or if I've left some food out, I'll put it back in uh, to make sure it doesn't go bad. Um, okay, but yes, that, that was my point, is um, that uh, physicists seem to apply, imply that, the, uh, that you do know, that nothing happens, but that's not true. You do deform the, the molecules of the wall. And same, same with normal force, they sort of treat it like it's an, a magic force, you know? It's just the normal force, man, it's normal. Uh, no, it, it is a force that is created because of electricity that binds solids together. Um, and if you put enough force on a uh, solid, you will break it. That is, that is enough. Um, to, you will separate the, you will, you will drive the atoms so far apart that the, uh, you know, uh, that the electrical force won't hold them together anymore. Um, so, you know, I guess it's the, rep that's actually a good question. But I mean, basically, in a solid, atoms have a very, ni molecules are not lined up in a very nice pattern. Uh, if you break that pattern badly enough, the solid will itself break. Um, it won't be able to resist the force that you're putting on it. Okay. Other questions, comments? I think I have, this is a record number of people uh, in chat talking at the same time. Three. I'm very happy about that. Let's see who else is here. Um, okay, notice 30 still here, uh, I guess. And I know a lot of these, another TV viewer and Commander Root, I'm pretty sure, are just bots that monitor uh, what people do on uh, Twitch. So, fire away with any other questions, comments, dares, suggestions. Uh, I'll, I'll have to get a thesaurus at some point to, to keep talking here. Yes, it is. It is a warm and dry place. It is very nice. It is in a semi-arid zone. Um, it's about 10 inches of rain here in, it is, it is warm and dry. It's, it, it's, it's almost in a desert. We have 10 inches of rain per year, and the western part of the city is actually in the great southwestern desert. So it is dry, it is warm, it is nice. We're having really nice weather now. Um, so, you know, you can, and, and that's kind of nice. We do have a, we do have winter, of course, but it's not, you know, it doesn't really start till November or, you know, well. Fall doesn't, you know, it doesn't really get cold until late November, and it starts warming up in early March, so it's not, it's not too bad. Um, after, and sometimes, and sometimes even in the middle of January or December, it gets really warm. We do get snow. We get snow occasionally, and every time we get snow, it pretty much shuts down the whole city. Uh, schools get closed, um, and, you know, that, that's just, it's just, we're not really good with snow. Um, so it'll snow like two or three times a year. Sometimes the snow will remain on the ground um, for a couple more days, but but no, we're not we're not good with snow. We don't get a lot of snow. I'm guessing in Sweden you do get a lot of snow. So are you guys in? Um, I guess I'm, I don't know if you're in the same place, Natalo and um, T Torp. Are you guys near Stockholm, or is there another part of Switzerland? Uh, sorry, Sweden, another part of Sweden. Um, 
that uh, that is uh, that is not not Stockholm. Because um, I really I think of Sweden as being two things basically Stockholm and not Stockholm. Um, this is where I live. Somewhere in this area is where I live. Uh, Fifty. It's a little cooler than I thought. Um, so let's go over to Sweden. A nation of some sort. Oh, so you're you're further south than Stockholm? I've heard of Malmo. Oh, there's your little bridge with Denmark. That is cool. How do I get rid of this thing? No. Be gone. Okay. Luna. Well, I could I know I could Google search for it, but let me see if I can find it without oh. Oh Lund. Did you say Lund? You did say Lund. This thing right here. Cool. Lund. See that looks like it's really beautiful. I don't does the whole city look like this? That is gorgeous. But I get the feeling that's like the best picture of the city. Um Um let's see, I need to go back here. Uh, all right, thank you for watching, t -Torp. Really appreciate it. Um, I don't know what time it is in Sweden. I could probably, well, I could find out so easily I'm going to actually do it. Um, because I love my Wolfram Alpha command line client. So for those of you who don't know, it's about 9.30 in Sweden right now. So go get some sleep or whatever. Um, uh, okay, that's outside of Lund? Oh, of course. Yeah, the picture was, of course, outside of Lund. Um, I think every city does that. They try to show you how beautiful their city is by taking a picture of, like, the best place and not, you know, showing you the real city. Um, I don't know why people in Sweden would sleep at 9.30. I do know that in the winter you guys have earlier sunsets because you're so far north. But we're, like, six or seven days from the equinox. Um... Not a huge deal. Good night, T Torp. Rolf, to answer your questions, I have met people who do that. I do not do that. What I do is I use, right now, what I'm doing is I'm using a program called C Spice, uh, which is a NASA program. And I'm trying to see when. Um, so the moon. Well, oh, sorry, let me go back a step. There are a lot of stars in the sky. That not that many are visible, but a lot of stars in the sky. And every so often, something comes between the star and us on Earth. That's called an occultation. So the moon occults things all the time because it's freaking huge. But every so often, a planet like Jupiter might come between us and, say, for example, the star Antares, the you know, brightest star in, this, in Scorpio constellation. Um, and that's an occultation that's sort of interesting to watch. Uh, now, one thing I'm not sure people have done uh, people have looked for that. You could you could find all of the uh, occultations um, by planets. There's even a book that someone had, and I went to it. Um, <laughs> um, and I even had I even brought up on one of my streams a book that lists. There's not there's like five or six uh, planets that will occult uh, bright stars uh, in this entire century. So that's very rare. But the question I'm asking is, what about if one of the moons of Jupiter occults a star, or what a moon of Saturn, or a moon of you know anything else, Uranus? Uh, what if one of those occults a star? And of course, there's also the question: What if an asteroid occults a star, uh, or a comet occults a star? Um, I get the feeling that a lot of these things have been computed, uh, but. What I found is that the program I use, the NASA program I use to check for occultations doesn't include all of Saturn's moons or Jupiter's moons. There are some moons that are not listed yet. Presumably they'll get added at some point. Uh, so what I'm doing is I'm trying to add them right now to uh, C Spice to the program so I can check for occultations by these previously not included moons and if I'm very lucky, I might find an occultation 
uh, that no one has found before. So, I'm, and if I'm very, very lucky, it'll be sometime soon. So I could tell people, hey, look, even though no one knew about it, two months from now, you're going to see this star get dimmer briefly because one of the moons of Jupiter is going to pass in front of it. Um, but again, that, that's, a, that's, a, that's a, a long shot. Um, good deal, Nat Natalo. Thank you for watching. Appreciate your, your viewership. And uh, have fun in Sweden. Have a, have a good night in Sweden. Thank you, and you too. Okay, so hopefully that explanation was confusing enough that it, it has no meaning anymore. But that's roughly what I'm trying to do right now. Um, tomorrow I might do something totally different. Um, well, since you've actually asked and given me an excuse to talk about it, um, one of the things I've done, let me ask you a question. How do you feel about the, uh, are you aware of the comic strip Pearls Before Swine? And if so, how do you feel about it? This is audience participation time right here. And we will wait the standard reasonable amount of time because there is a slight delay for reasons that no one really understands. I have you have not heard about that comic, Ralph. Remind me where you're from. Um, I, I you told me and I don't remember, and it could be the United States, in case which case I'll feel really bad because uh, I don't like to forget Americans. Norway. Oh, you're Scandinavian as well. Cool. Okay, so this is going to be. Um, less interesting but I'm trying to create a you know most people create wikis one page at a time but I believe that wikis can be created multiple pages at a time because you can put in a lot of information um, in a single file so that's what I'm trying to do is create a wiki from a single file I've actually done it uh, but I'm not happy with the way I've done it I eventually like to do it in such a way um, that for one thing if I can host it on github pages uh, as pure HTML, that would be insanely awesome. Um, and right now I'm having a third party hosted who's doing it for free, which is very nice, but obviously if he decides to stop doing it, um, I'm kind of screwed, so I've got to move it to something that's more local to one of my servers, um, or GitHub pages, or something like that. But uh, that, that, is the, uh, that, is the, uh, that is the thing I actually meant to start on like two or three days ago, uh, this thing right here. Um, and, and I, uh, and I got caught up in this, uh, in this, uh, this, uh, trying to find more, uh, moons thing. The reason I, the reason this is sort of not really higher priority, but if I can get these added, I can run programs in the background to compute the occultations. Uh, so basically at that point, the computer's doing the work and I can go back to doing something else. Um, so it's better to start this as early as possible, although currently um, it's taking a lot longer than I thought to, to, get these, uh, to get these numbers in the way I need them. So if you have any other questions, comments, you want to do something else entirely, let me know. Uh, I will briefly return to doing what I was doing before, which is trying to figure out how to get these all uh, correct. So these are NAFE IDs with radiuses. Um, Uh, it's a good question. Um, C Spice does them numerically. In fact, it does it worse than numerically. What happens is NASA will take um, take the data they have, and they will run a uh, differential equation solver on it, and then they will release the results. So it, I'm not even doing differential equations. I'm taking what NASA did, using their results, and um, and going with those. Um, now because the moons will orbit Saturn elliptically, as an ellipse, you could do calculations um, semi-analytically. Ellipses don't have great properties, but you could at least set up the equations analytically. Um, and then, you know, and then, but the problem is, and this is the reason that NASA does this, 
is uh, the orbits are not perfect ellipses uh, because they are perturbed by other item, other moons, other items in the solar system, all of this good stuff. So the actual orbits are much more complicated. Uh, if you want to get them 100% accurate, oh god. Um, yeah, I was about to mention that the two moons that share an orbit. Um, yeah. <coughs> and a part of that is because they affect each other gravitationally. Um, the, ellip the elliptical solution occurs when you have only two bodies. If you have two bodies, one will uh, orbit the other as either an ellipse, um, a parabola, or a hyperbola. That is, uh, that is something that's been established, um, I think, by Newton. Maybe it might have been Kepler. I think it was, it was Kepler, actually. Um, however, once you have three or more objects, you have the three-body problem, uh, which cannot be solved analytically. Uh, sometimes you can get around that by pretending uh, one of the bodies has little or no mass. And by the way, I don't know if you were here earlier. Um, uh, let's see, I can't find it anymore. Uh, no, come on, where is it? Okay. All right, I'm not going to be able to find it. What's interesting is even in the spice files, some of the some of the uh, moons have zero mass, or they're treated as though they have zero mass. Um, I was surprised to learn that earlier in today's streams, that their gravitational mass parameter is zero, because they have effectively no gravitational effect on anything else. Um, but but obviously that's not true of everything. Uh, most moons are heavy enough to have some sort of gravitational effect. Um, so yeah, I'm, ch I'm cheating in the sense that I'm getting my positions essentially um, essentially getting my positions from ones NASA has computed. Uh, and I'm ignoring Pomodoro this time because you're here. And I love Norwegians and Scandinavians in general. Um, so the, so I'm, I am cheating in using NASA positions, uh, but, but I'm trying to see if... Um, uh, one of the problems is NASA does not have a radius. Well, that's not true. The program I'm using does not give me the radius of some of Jupiter and Saturn's moons. However, if you go to this lovely web page that I've now lost, here, it's around here somewhere. I need to find it. Oh, here's the here's the page I was talking about that has a list of all the bright star occultations. So there are not that many of them between 1900 and 2100. There's only a handful of them. So this is not new news. This would be um, not interesting. Um, but they don't include whether the moons will occult it. And actually, it's been computed for the well-known moons, of course. Uh, let me see if I can find what I'm looking for here. But the, the issue is, the issue that I'm dealing with right now is I can't find what I'm looking for. But let me see if I can... Uh, this... So you'll see here that we have this Saturnian satellite fact sheet. It lists the radius for lots and lots of moons. Saturn has a, like a buttload of moons. So all of these, all listed. The problem is in the program I use, these are not listed. Um, Spice does not have these radiuses listed yet. So I could wait for them to add them, which they will eventually. Um, but if I do that, then then I'll probably not be able to get the first discovery position of an occultation if one occurs. So that's that's why I'm trying to do this. Um, and I will, of course, complain to NASA because, you know, I like complaining. But I will also ask NASA. I mean, they already know this, but I'll remind them that it would be a good idea to start putting these radiuses into a file where people could compute them. So right now, the program I use treats these as abstract points, points with no radius. Uh, and the problem is having one, and stars are also essentially points in the sky because they're so far away. Treating two things as points, a point obscuring a point is virtually impossible. I mean, they're geometrically have zero width, zero height, zero depth. Um, so two of them, you know, essentially, they take up no volume whatsoever. Uh, so that's why I need radiuses 
to actually check for occultations. Okay, I think I've beaten that to death now. Um, okay. All right, other questions, comments, uh, blah, blah, blah. And of course, one of the problems I've run into, which I don't, I think everyone runs into this, is in the middle of doing it one way, I think of a better way of doing it, and then as I, as I keep going in the old way, I realize the new way is so much better that it actually seems beneficial to abandon the current way for the new way. Although, I really doubt, let's see, uh, okay, um, it's a good question, actually. Our moon can occult stars for like over an hour. That's, that's our, but our moon is huge. Um, yeah, these are these are good. Yeah, you, you do. You do need to compensate for light travel time, and I think I can show you how we do that. Um, nope, not here. Um, now let's see. So here in the documentation of one of the functions I use. Um, they actually do have a, how do you want to correct for light time? You can correct for one-way light time and stellar aberration, converged Newtonian light time, because the problem is when you correct for light time, um, in that amount of time that it takes light to get there, the thing that you're watching has already moved. So, you know, if you're looking, if you, um, say, where was the, uh, sun eight minutes ago to compute its position, that's great, but the Earth wasn't in that position eight minutes ago. You're looking at a different position now. Um, because, you know, you're looking at the Earth sun, sure, eight minutes ago, sun, but then also, um, let's see what I was trying to say here. Um, um, no, I, there, there's something I'm trying to say here and I'm not saying it correctly. The problem is if you correct for light time um, in one direction, and even if you correct for light time in both directions, there's a problem in the sense that in that time that you correct for, um, oh, right, right, yeah, not, that's what I meant to say, sorry. Um, uh, so, yeah, you need to know where the, the sun was eight minutes ago, but it's possible that eight minutes ago, the sun was eight minutes and one light second away, which means now you have to compute for that extra second. If, the su if something's distance is changing uh, and you, com uh, you compensate for the light travel time, by the time you've compensated for that, it's possible that object was further away or closer to you, so your your compensation is incorrect. And that's what they mean by converged Newtonian light time. Um, so this, this is basically just saying, so you basically then correct for the correction. Uh, and you keep doing that until, you're, until your numbers are like within, you know, a very small amount. So yeah, you do have to convert. You do have to. Um, uh, you do have to allow for light time travel, and you have to allow for the fact that, in the time that you allowed for light time travel, the distance between the two objects may have changed. Uh, so the light time travel that you computed is inaccurate, and then you compensate for that. You keep compensating, and eventually you do get to a. You do get to a converged answer that is accurate to within a fraction of a second. So that's what they're doing here. Um, stellar aberration. Not re it's the bending of light because of um, because of gravity bends light, but that's not usually a huge deal. Um, so yeah, and the other problem, by the way, is of course, I'm assuming NASA's numbers are 100% completely accurate, um, and, and and NASA doesn't. I mean, NASA doesn't claim that they are. NASA knows that their numbers are approximations. They're predictions. They're approximations. Um, so I'm going to be making calculations that are based on uh, my assumption that NASA is being exact, but it's quite possible that my, uh, my predictions won't come true because the actual positions and the actual, even the actual radiuses, a uh, position of the moon, position of Saturn, position of the Earth, all of those things may be different, a little bit different, but because, as you said, these, these moons are very small. They're like three kilometers. Um, I don't know how, uh, let's see. Um, how large is the, well, okay. Yeah, I was hoping you wouldn't ask that because the question's actually a little bit more complicated than that. NASA does not, uh, they could. I mean, if you go to Horizons, you can get a second by second or even closer than a second to second uh, position of something. 
but that's inefficient. What NASA actually releases is a set of polynomial approximations. So you can approximate the polynomial down to the nanosecond if you want to, uh, because it's a continuous function. Um, so yeah, but, but of course, again, NASA does warn about this. Um, you can do that. You can, you could tell, you know, you could say at this nanosecond, Saturn will be at this, the center of Saturn will be at this position down to the nanometer, but there's no way that's precise. That's just because, you know, when you have exact numbers, you can do whatever the hell you want with them, but NASA's predictions are not good to the, uh, not good to the nanometer and they're not good to the nanosecond and they know that. Um, but it does mean that if I want to do uh, evaluation, I'm not limited by NASA's numbers. I can evaluate as much as I want, as little as I want, whatever I want. Um, so, and I, I think the position for Saturn itself is off by like 200 or 300 kilometers. So, trying to get the exact position of a moon that's a hundredth the size of the error of the position of Saturn is, you know, I, I mean, it's, it's insane. It's, it's going to be very difficult. The best I could do is make the prediction and then, you know, astronomers could watch for that and they wouldn't just watch it that one instant of time because, I mean, they know it's not going to be that accurate. But they could watch it other, you know, in other places at other times and that might help uh, us see that the, uh, you know, the NASA prediction is not 100% accurate. And NASA releases new predictions called ephemerises or ephemerides every so often. So this is not even the, the first set of predictions. Every so often they revise their set of predictions based on observations, based on the spacecraft they send out there. Um, for example, uh, the Pluto New Horizons project, after that was over, they released a set of data for Pluto, a set of polynomials for Pluto that was more accurate than the previous, uh, than the previous sets were. So again, um, oh man, you're really nailing these questions. Um, well, when you get updated polynomials, yeah, you definitely get discontinuities because um, they change stuff. I mean, there's just no way to do it without, if, I mean, you can actually show that if two polynomials agree on n points, they have to be the same polynomial. Um, so if these were the same, if there wasn't any, if there weren't any discontinuities, um, you would have uh, the, the exact same polynomials. There's no way around that. So there have to be discontinuities. But the bigger problem is um, even within a, you know, within a specific set of, um, specific set of polynomials, the polynomials are good for a certain, each polynomial is good for a certain period of time. Um, so the polynomial for the moon, the current polynomial for the moon is good for let's say four days. After that, they go to a different polynomial for the next four days. Now the polynomials agree, um, the polynomials are continue, I mean, you know, at the point where the polynomial changes, the polynomials agree up to n derivatives. Um, so, you know, the, the first, if it's a ninth degree polynomial, uh, they'll agree through the first eight derivatives, but they can't possibly agree on the ninth derivative, otherwise it would be the same polynomial. So if you're looking at the ninth derivative or whatever it is for the given, uh, given um, planet or whatever you're looking at, uh, the ninth derivative is not continuous across the border. So it changes discontinuously um, when you when you know when you go from one time to another time. And that's kind of painful. The answer to that is VSOP theory. Uh, VSOP um, is a way of uh, VSOP gives you a, a, um, cosine and sine func well cosine functions that are good for always. Uh, so they don't break their, you know, they don't have a, uh, I'm trying to remember what it's, it's not a partial function, it's a, um, it's a function, oh man, it's going to bug me now. Partial function, I don't think is the right word, but um, ultimately NASA's polynomials are, this is wrong, um, um, Yeah, partial just means it's not defined everywhere. Um, wow. All right, and I also spelled function wrong.
function defined differently on different intervals. That should give you the name that I want. Uh, piecewise, piecewise function. The polynomials NASA gives are piecewise functions. They change from one polynomial to another at, well, th th all of this is defined in their documentation, but, but yeah, they, they're different polynomials and they are discontinuous uh, at a high enough derivative level as they must be, otherwise they'd be the same. That bugs me slightly, but it turns out their numbers are much more accurate than anybody else's numbers, so you kind of have to live with that. Okay, other questions, comments? Mm. Yeah, this is the classic example of a piecewise function. Uh, you put a little brace there, and then you have different definitions depending on whether x is less than 0 or greater than or equal to 0. Um, there are more complex ones, of course. Uh, let me see if I can actually, just because I'm now curious, see if anybody else has complained about this. Um, oh, wow. They actually mention it. <laughs> you bet. Uh, so it looks like um, it looks like they're aware of the the fact that they're they're using piecewise functions, not not um, not functions that are continuous in every derivative. I think those are called complete functions. <laughs> well, thank you for watching. I think it's been over two and a half hours now. Let me double check. Oh yeah, we're up to almost two hours forty five minutes. I'm glad to get back into streaming. Thank you for watching, uh, Rolf and everybody else. Um, I may or may not be back later today. I usually say that and do not come back, so wouldn't rely on that. Um, and if we do, we might get back to doing this. I might get bored, do something completely different. Thank you for watching. Goodbye for now.